Now we get to think about section drawings. And why make them? Well, as you know, uh, they allow us to show things that we can't see if we're just looking at the solid outside of an object. They can let you study what's going on inside, like this uh, drawing of a Boeing 737 fuselage. And this helps make the part clear to the reader, um, our internal customer, who's going to use our drawing to make something. Also, remember that ASME rule, which says you may not dimension to a hidden line at all, period. And so if you have something that's shown with a hidden line and you need to dimension it, what you do is you make a section. Now that line becomes visible. Now you can dimension to it. That may be the most common reason for making a section. The views work just like orthographic views. It's the glass box again. So here's a part in a top view and a front view, unfolding the flaps of the box. Here's the part that was cut in half. This arrow shows where it was cut. You throw away the front part, and what's left is the section view. So you're looking at this cut edge, looking towards the back of the part. It's the glass box again. We do not label section views. Just like we do not label the top, front, and side view in a drawing, we do not label the section views either. They're just orthographic views, that's all. There, there is an exception. If for some reason you're not able to align the views, you're not able to do the glass box, then you have to label the sections. So for example, here's someone uh, making drawings of a box wrench with one, two, three, four sections through the wrench. And obviously section BB here is way down here. That is not aligned with the wrench. So they pulled it down here to a different place on the sheet. They labeled it. They put a B and a B next to the arrow so that the reader could tell which section was talking about what part on the wrench. And notice they also labeled the scale. But normally you don't do that. Normally it's just the glass box, one view aligned with the other view. Now you draw these cutting plane lines to show where you cut the part. I think of it as an imaginary saw blade. And this cutting plane line is showing where you cut through the part with your imaginary saw blade. Here's another example. In this one, uh, here's the cutting plane line showing that we cut the part in the middle. We're looking to the right and we threw away the left half. Here is that view that is left in our glass box. Cutting plane lines are thick. They're the same thickness as object lines. And you're allowed to use either a phantom line type or a dashed line type. I prefer phantom. Um, I'm not sure why, I just do. Notice that the dashed lines are, have dashes that are twice as big as a hidden line. Hidden line dashes are an eighth of an inch, aren't they? These are a quarter of an inch, so it's a different line type. In our drawing for our class, the cutting plane layer has a phantom line type in it. Here is the ASME standard showing us cutting plane lines. And notice they're labeling them thick. Whether you use a dashed or a phantom or just an arrow on each end, they're thick. Here is a, this might be a, a clutch pedal on a good old Ford tractor, maybe. Uh, so here's a cutting plane line showing section AA and here's section AA. 
They are also illustrating that you can use these arrows to show a direction of view. Here is view BB, and here at the bottom is what it looks like when you're looking at view BB. It's not a section, it's just a view. You can just make a short section of cutting plane line on each side of the part, and if you do that, you don't use a phantom line, you just use a continuous thick line. And then the arrowheads show the reader which direction they are looking. You have to get out your best visualizing skills, your best glass box skills. Here's an example of the right direction and the wrong direction. You might find it helpful to come back and look at this example sometimes. ASME does not give us an exact uh, distance away from the part, but their examples tend to be about half an inch out beyond the part before we get to the arrow. And those arrows are twice as big as dimension arrows. So our dimension arrow is an eighth of an inch long. The cutting plane arrow is a quarter of an inch long. That means you need a new leader style to go with your cutting plane arrowheads if you're using them. And here are some illustrations in the ASME standard. Now, ASME says if you are sectioning a part along a center line, you do not need a cutting plane line, which is a good thing about the drawing we're going to be doing today. Uh, it, like these ASME examples, is cut along a center line, so therefore we do not need a cutting plane line or an arrow. The center line is the cutting plane line. Then we use hatching to show where the thing was cut. And again, thinking about our saw blade idea, the hatching shows where the material was touched by the imaginary saw blade. Notice here, the stuff that actually got cut has hatching on it. The back of the hole that did not get touched by the saw blade does not have any hatching on it. ASME calls that section lines, not hatching. And basic idea is they're thin, they're usually at a 45 degree angle, and they're somewhere between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch apart. But whatever angle you have them at, you can't have vertical or horizontal hatch lines. They have to be between 15 and 75 degrees, just like we do for leaders. Now, if you have a part that happens to be sitting at a 45 degree angle, you cannot have your hatching at a 45 degree angle because the hatch lines would be parallel with the part edges and somebody might think, oh, what is this, a bunch of heat fins or wh what are those things that are part of the part? So what you do is you rotate your hatch pattern a little bit so that it's at a different angle than the edge of the part. And for mechanical drawings, we always use the same hatch pattern. It's called ANSI 131. It's the pattern that has plain, evenly spaced lines at a 45 degree angle. That's it. That's the one we use. Now, architectural drawings are different, I grant you. In architectural drawings, drafters do use different patterns to represent different materials. But in mechanical, we don't do that. We just show the plain ANSI 131. If you have a very thin part, like this, whatever this is, shim or something, um, you don't have to hatch the very thin part. You can leave it blank, or you can use a solid black fill if you want. Now, if you have more than one part coming together, in a section view. What you do is you make the hatch pattern go in opposite directions, or at least in different directions. And that clearly illustrates that these are two different objects. But be careful, do not go in two different directions if it's all one part. 
that'll confuse people. Only go different directions if these really are two different objects. And do not put text in your hatching. Um, period. Now sometimes if there's some I can't think of an example, but if there's some reason why you really have to have text in there, you can use an island in your in your hatch and it will uh, carve out a hole where you can put text in there. But it's really not good. And uh, to illustrate that, here is the source document. So here is the ASME Y14.2 standard that includes stuff about hatching section lines. And I've highlighted the points that we just talked about. So they say lettering should not be put in the sectioned areas, although they say, all right, if you have to, you can uh, do something, make a hole in there like they did here. Uh, here they say on adjacent parts, draw the hatching in different directions. Uh, and here they say if the shape of the part is parallel or perpendicular to the hatch lines, then choose a special angle. In other words, rotate your hatch pattern a little bit. 